Hello and welcome to another episode of Celestial Chronicles. Today, we're diving deep into a topic that has intrigued humanity for centuries, the seven deadly sins. The concept of the seven deadly sins often surfaces in various cultural depictions, from literature to visual arts, highlighting the gravity of these vices. These sins pride, envy, wrath, sloth, greed, gluttony, and lust are notorious for their potential to lead humanity astray. But what exactly renders them so lethal? Is it the inherent nature of these attitudes, or the detrimental deeds they incite? Moreover, we explore the biblical remedies to these notorious sins, which guide us in adhering to the Holy Spirit's summons to transform into the likeness of Christ Jesus, our Savior. The term seven deadly sins is familiar within Christian circles, yet there remains ambiguity surrounding them. What constitutes the seven deadly sins? Are they explicitly enumerated in the scriptures, or are they a construct of theological tradition? Do they carry a weightier consequence than other transgressions? Can they be pardoned? As the Celestial Chronicles family, in this episode we aim to dispel misconceptions and shed light on the seven deadly sins. Join us as we unravel these mysteries and shed light on this fascinating subject. Ready to embark on this journey? Let's get started. As mentioned before, the list of seven deadly sins in question does not appear in any Bible verse. However, a slightly different set of sins can be found in Proverbs 6 verses 16 to 19, these six things the Lord hates, yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among brethren. Additionally, Galatians 5 verses 19 to 21 mention several more sins to be on our guard against, now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are, immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envying, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these, of which I forewarn you, just as I have forewarned you, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. The seven deadly sins are the following. 1. Anger. 2. Envy. 3. Gluttony. 4. Greed. 5. Lust. 6. Pride. 7. Sloth. And, if you're wondering, the order of the seven deadly sins doesn't have any significance. The above list is simply in alphabetical order. It isn't as though these sins are ranked in the mind of God. In fact, the categorization of these seven sins as deadly is a human invention, not a heavenly one. One pride is often characterized by an overbearing self-regard or a longing to surpass others in status or importance. The ethical principle that underpins human dignity suggests that we should regard each person as a mirror of ourselves, valuing their life and the essential conditions for a dignified existence, as stated in the principle, respect for the human person entails respecting all people as another self, without any exceptions, and considering their life and the resources needed for living it with dignity. 2. Lust is defined by a powerful craving, often directed towards sexual gratification, but it can also manifest as a thirst for wealth, authority, or recognition. The Divine Council consistently cautions humanity against the allure of temptations that appear enticing, deemed good for food, a pleasure to the eyes, and desirable for gaining wisdom, echoing the ancient narrative of human fallibility. 3. Gluttony typically refers to the excessive indulgence in food or beverages. The virtue of temperance encourages moderation, steering us clear of any form of overindulgence, whether it be in eating, drinking, smoking, or the use of medications. It is a call to exercise self-restraint and maintain balance in our habits and consumption. For greed is characterized by an intense longing and affection for material wealth. It represents a deviation from the core values of authentic love for God and fellow beings, stemming from an unhealthy fixation on material possessions. This misdirection of the heart undermines the spirit of generosity and community, emphasizing the moral teaching that true fulfillment comes from relationships and spiritual wealth, not material accumulation. 5. Sloth also known as astia, is not merely physical inactivity but also encompasses a lack of interest in spiritual development and growth. It is described as a state where one turns away from the happiness and goodness offered by God, showing an indifference to the spiritual nourishment and fulfillment that is available to all. Six anger, or wrath, is described as unbridled emotions of animosity or fury. It is often associated with a yearning for retribution. The scriptures caution, anger is a desire for revenge. The Lord says, everyone who is angry with his brother shall be liable to judgment. This reflects the biblical stance that while anger itself is not inherently sinful, it becomes problematic when it leads to harmful actions or persists without resolution. The Bible acknowledges that anger can be a natural response to injustice and can serve as a catalyst for addressing wrongs, but it should be managed in a way that aligns with godly principles and leads to constructive solutions rather than destructive outcomes. 
7. Envy is a feeling of discontent or covetousness with regard to another's advantages, success, or possessions. It is often said that envy can lead to the gravest offenses. Through the devil's envy death entered the world, highlighting the destructive potential of this emotion when it spirals out of control. It suggests that envy is not merely a benign longing but can have serious, far-reaching consequences. History of the Seven Deadly Sins The Seven Deadly Sins, a roster of vices including pride, greed, lust, wrath, gluttony, envy, and sloth, were first categorized by Pope Gregory I near the year 600. In parallel, he identified the seven virtues, faith, hope, charity, justice, prudence, temperance, and fortitude. While these concepts resonate with biblical teachings, they are not explicitly listed as such within the scriptures. The Bible does not specifically name them the seven deadly sins or seven virtues. These classifications came long after the Ten Commandments, which date back to around 1450 BC at Mount Sinai. It's believed that these lists were widely utilized in Christian instruction, especially during times preceding the widespread availability of the printed Bible, when direct access to the scriptures was not common for most people. The root cause of these sins. At the heart of the seven deadly sins is a common thread, the insatiable yearning for more and the pursuit of excess. These sins stand in stark contrast to the foundational principles of Christianity, which are centered on love for God, compassion for others, and respect for our own bodies, viewing them as sacred temples, 1 Corinthians 6 verses 19 to 20. The Apostle Paul emphasizes contentment in Philippians 4 verses 11 to 12, stating, I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. This sentiment directly challenges the core of these sins, suggesting that with faith, we can trust in God's provision and resist the temptation to seek beyond what is necessary. What cures these deadly sins? The antidote to the seven deadly sins lies in the transformative power of divine grace. The scripture in Ezekiel 36 verses 26 to 27 offers a profound promise, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. This passage suggests that the true remedy is a heart renewed by God's hand, infused with his spirit, leading one to live in harmony with his commandments and love. The strength to overcome these sins doesn't originate from within ourselves, rather, it is a gift from God. He is the one who renews our hearts, guiding us to walk in his paths. As this transformation takes root, the hold of sins like gluttony, envy, sloth, wrath, pride, lust, and greed diminishes. In their place grows a desire to embody the teachings of the Bible, driven by the presence of the Holy Spirit within us. As we conclude our exploration of the seven deadly sins, we hope you've gained a deeper understanding of these vices and the biblical remedies against them. Remember, the strength to overcome these sins is a gift from God, and with faith, we can resist the temptation to seek beyond what is necessary. Now, we'd love to hear from you. Which of these sins resonated with you the most? How do you practice the virtues that counter these sins in your daily life? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for joining us on this journey at Celestial Chronicles. Stay tuned for more enlightening discussions. Until next time, stay blessed and inspired.